Good day. The summit meeting between President Putin of Russia and President Biden of the United States in Geneva is underway as I speak. And um, over the course of the next couple of days, I will no doubt be covering the uh, results of the summit meeting to the extent that they're made published in future programmes for this channel. But before I do so, I'm going to make a brief video today about a remarkably surreal episode which has taken place over the last couple of days and which, to my mind, shows the extent to which there is opposition and hostility to any attempt to improve relations between the United States and Russia embedded deeply within the US foreign policy establishment. Briefly, on 10th June 2021, an article appeared in the Washington Post, sourced again to the usual anonymous sources, which clearly uh, um, are embedded somewhere within the US intelligence and foreign policy community, alleging that Russia was about to sell a Canopus V satellite to Iran. Now, the clearest account of this is not actually from the Washington Post article. It is actually provided by Reuters. And I'm going to summarise, I'm going to read out the entire Reuters article, which gives you an impression, a good impression, of the nature of the sale that was supposed to be um, planned as between the Russians and the Iranians with respect to the Canopus V satellite. And this is the article which appears on Reuters' his website, and which is still there, by the way, and which appeared on, on 10th June 2021. Russia is preparing to provide Iran with an advanced satellite that would enable it to track potential military targets across the Middle East, the Washington Post reported on Thursday. The plan would deliver a Russian-made Canopus V satellite equipped with a high-resolution camera which could be launched from Russia within months. The report was published days before US President Joe Biden and Russian President Vladimir Putin meet in Geneva and as Iran and the United States are engaged in indirect talks on renewing, reviving a 2015 nuclear deal designed to put curbs on Iran's nuclear programme in exchange for easing economic sanctions. The satellite would allow continuous monitoring of facilities ranging from Persian Gulf oil refineries and Israeli military bases to Iraqi barracks that house US troops, said the paper, which cited three unnamed sources, our famous three unnamed sources, a current and a former US official, and a senior Middle Eastern government official briefed on the sale. Presumably that latter person is from the Israeli or perhaps the Saudi governments. Whilst the Canopus V is marketed for civilian use, leaders of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps have made several trips to Russia since 2018 to help negotiate the agreement, the Post said. Russian experts travelled to Iran this spring to help train crews who would operate the satellite from a newly built facility near Karaj, west of Tehran, it added. The satellite would feature Russian hardware, including a cam camera with a resolution of 1.2 metres, a significant improvement over Iran's current capabilities, though still far short of the quality achieved by US spy satellites. The Revolutionary Guards said in April 2020 that they had successfully launched the country's first military satellite into orbit, prompting the then US Secretary of State Mike Pompeo to call for Tehran to be held accountable because he believed the action defied a Security Council, UN Security Council resolution. So there we have a detailed account of this sale. It's been negotiated by the Iranians and the Russians ever since uh, 2018. 
There have been repeated visits to Russia by members of the Revolutionary Guard Corps to uh, discuss and agree the terms of this sale with the Russians. The satellite is to be launched within weeks and it's to be launched from in Russia. And the Russians have already trained the Iranian operators of this satellite to operate it, and it will be operated from a place, a location in Iran, Karaj, west of Tehran, which is specifically identified. An enormous amount of circumstantial detail, all of which one might might want lead one to think that this is a done thing and it's based on actual intelligence and real facts and is therefore to be taken seriously. Well, the problem with the entire story is that it was completely and entirely and utterly wrong. No part of it, it seems, was true. And we have discovered this from a bizarre interview that President Putin of Russia had on the eve of his summit meeting with President uh, Biden in Geneva with NBC television. Now, this interview has to be watched or uh, to be believed, and perhaps the transcript also has to be watched to be believed, because it is a classic example of the kind of interview that uh, President Putin now has to suffer when he meets with members of the Western media especially, I have to say, of the Anglo-American media. The trouble he always encounters is that these persons uh, live or inhabit an entirely different information world from the one in which he exists. And there is very little overlap between them. So they bring up topics which, as far as he is concerned, have no reality but in which they seem to believe in passionately and with intense sincerity. And the Canopus V satellite is a classic case in point. Now, the interview actually began with this topic, and I'm going to read this part of the interview, the entire transcript, as published on the Kremlin website, in full. And it begins as follows. So there's the question from Keir Simmons of uh, NBC. Mr. President, it's been a long time since you sat down with an American television network. Almost three years, I think. Thank you for the time. Uh, There's a lot to discuss. I hope we have time to get to all of the issues. But I want to begin with some news from the US just today. In the US, it's reported that Russia is preparing perhaps within months, to supply Iran with an advanced satellite system enabling Tehran to track military targets. Is that true? Now, the Kremlin has then inserted a whole section, a whole paragraph, uh, um, which says the following, and it's in capitals, complete mistranslation twice about hacking and giving Iran technology for its nuclear program. The Russian translators, the Kremlin's translators, were utterly bemused by the question and couldn't make any sense of what Keir Simmons was talking about. Eventually, and apparently after a lot of discussion, it was worked out by the Russian in- translators that, um, that Keir Simmons was not asking about um, Russian help to Iran for its nuclear program or Russian hacking, but about some kind of assistance to Iran with respect to this Canopus V satellite. Anyway, you get a flavour of the confusion from uh, Putin's answer to this question. Would you mind repeating the question again, that we are preparing to hack what kind of facilities... And Keir Simmons responds, no, it's the report today that Russia is preparing to give or to offer to Iran a satellite technology which will enable Iran to target military, to make military targets. And then we learn that Simmons was laughing. And then Putin replies as follows, no, we don't have that kind of program with Iran. 
It's just nonsense all over again, yet again. We have cooperation plans with Iran, including military and technical cooperation, and all of this fits the framework of the decisions that were reached uh, and agreed upon in our program in regards to Iran's nuclear program in the context of UN decisions taken together with our partners in the preparation of the JCPOA, whereby some point sanctions, including in the area of military and technological technological cooperation should be lifted from Iran. We have certain programs which concern conventional weapons, if it gets that far. However, we haven't even reached that stage yet. We don't even have that any kind of real cooperation in the conventional weapons area. So if anybody is inventing something regarding modern space-based technology, this is just plain fiction. This is just fake news. At the very least, I don't know anything about this kind of thing. Those who are speaking about it probably know more about it. It's just nonsense. Garbage. But then, of course, that's a clear denial that there is any prospect of any kind of sale of a Canopus V satellite or of any sort of satellite, by Russia to Iran. But Keir, Keir Simmons just can't let it go. Here's his next question. So, presumably you'd agree that giving Iran satellite technology that might enable it to target US servicemen and women in places like Iraq or to share that information with Hezbollah or the Houthis in Yemen so they could target Israel and Saudi Arabia, that giving Iran that kind of satellite technology would be dangerous. And Putin then becomes utterly exasperated. Look, why are we talking about problems that don't exist? There is no subject for discussion. Somebody has invented something. Somebody has made something up. Maybe this is just a bogus story so as to limit any kind of military and technical cooperation with Iran. I will say once again, this is just some fake information that I have no knowledge about. For the first time, I'm hearing about this information from you. We don't have this kind of intention, and I'm not even sure that Iran is even able to accommodate this kind of technology. This is a separate subject, a very high-tech subject. We don't rule out cooperation with many world nations in space, but probably everyone knows very well our position in terms that we are categorically against space militarization altogether. We believe that space should be free from any and all kinds of weapons located in near-Earth orbits. We don't have this kind of plans or any plans, especially concerning the technology of the level that you have just described. So there we go. Straightforward, categorical denial. Now, it's fair to say that the US media has reported this denial to some extent and have repeated the, the story of the Russian sale of the Canopus V satellite to Iran is, uh, as Putin describes it, fake news. However, it's also fair to say that Putin's denial of this story has achieved nothing like the kind of attention or, uh, um, or, or coverage that the original story about the Canopus V sale uh, um, first elicited. Anyway, put all that to one side. Here we have a good example of how news and narratives are constructed. We have a story about a Russian sale of a Canopus V satellite to Iran. It's planted by three people in the media, specifically the Washington Post, one of them, we learn, is a serving officer in the U.S. government. One is a retired officer in the U.S. government. And one is a official of a Middle East country, probably Israel or conceivably Saudi Arabia, but more likely Israel. The story goes into an enormous amount of circumstantial detail. We are told, uh, we are told given information about the nature of the satellite, about its ability to track targets uh, um, across the Middle East, 
including US, uh, barracks, Iraqi barracks, where U.S. troops are stationed, and even locations in Israel itself. We are told that there have been negotiations between the Iranians and the Russians about the sale of this satellite, uh, going all the way back to 2018. We're even told the location from where the Iranians will control the satellite, and we've been informed that Russian technicians arrived in Iran this spring to train the Iranians in the use of this satellite. An extraordinary amount of detail, and none of it was true. Putin is incredulous. The Russian translators from the Kremlin are bewildered. Nobody in Moscow can make any sense of this story. And it turns out that the entire story is flatly denied by Putin and is therefore must be treated as completely untrue. Well, consider what would have happened if there had not been this interview between Putin and NBC directly after that story appeared in the Washington Post. It would have circulated for days, for weeks. It would have gathered its own momentum. The circumstantial detail involving it would have gained force and probably more detail. It would have been accepted as true. And at some point, when the Canopus V satellite failed to appear, the story would have quietly died. But the impression that the Russians were helping Iran with advanced technology would in the meantime have gained, become embedded in the Western media narrative, both about Russia and about Iran. And that would, of course, have soured the atmosphere in relations between both Iran, between both Iran and the United States and between Russia and the United States in advance of the meeting between Putin and Biden in Geneva and in advance of the re resumption of the JCPOA negotiations between the United States and Iran in Vienna. So here we see how these stories are created and how they are spread. Will anybody learn from this episode? The answer is, of course not. We're going to see more of these stories and they're going to be incessantly spread in exactly the same way as always. We're going to see similar stories with the same amount of circumstantial detail planted in the media, repeated by the media, becoming very quickly no longer stories that are circulating, but stories that are treated as fact. And eventually, and uh, um, when it turns out that there's no truth to them, they will be allowed to die. But a bad impression will have been created. There's been a great deal of talk in recent weeks and months about disinformation and how the Russians and the Chinese and the Iranians especially all engage in disinformation. The latest NATO communique which has been published and which I discussed at length in an article, in a video that I did for this programme, accuses both Russia and China of engaging in disinformation. Well, you've seen in this episode of the fictitious Canopus V satellite and its sale by Russia to Iran, an example of how disinformation actually works. Except, of course, it was not the Russians or the Chinese or the Iranians who were behind it. Well, thank you very much for this, for joining me on this programme today. I look forward to you joining me in future programmes on this channel and on our main channel, The Duran, where I do programmes with my colleague and friend, Alex Christoforo. Please also remember to uh, check us out on our main uh, uh, channel, I'm um, uh, 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 sorry, on our other platforms, BitChute, Odyssey and Super U and Locals. Please also, by the way, remember to check out Alex's channel. You find links all under this video. Please also support us to the extent that you can via PayPal, Patreon and Subscribestar. And last but not least, please remember to check, check out our shop 
look up the wonderful things we have here there our amazing duran mugs our t-shirts our sweatshirts our hats our hoodies um, uh, um, and all the rest and also please go to our discord server last but not least please check your subscription to this channel and please also remember to tick the like button of this video and thank you for joining me today and i look forward to you joining me in future programs and have a wonderful day until then